Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today I'm talking about the top 10 scary objects from World War II. The World Wars are a stretch of history that totally fascinate me. That time between 1910 and 1950, in those pre and post war eras, human history changed dramatically. What is your favourite era of history? Please do let me know in the comments section down below because I love me some history chat. Also, in another direction, what's the scariest object you've ever found? I feel like I'm always talking about that spooky chair that I hate in the upstairs landing of my mum's house in England. Like it freaks me out and I want her to get rid of it. It's got some bad energy. Blech. Also, while you're down there leaving a comment, why don't you like this video and share it with a friend? If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead. If you want to read more about our sources, they're in the description box along with our most amazing Instagrams. Go ahead, be my guest. Alright, coming in at number 10, we have the glass jar. As we know, the Americans, with the support from the Allies, dropped the horrifying atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The attacks killed over 200,000 people horribly, and the cities were absolutely decimated. Imagine how fragile human flesh is when it comes to heat, and then imagine how hot something would need to be to melt glass. Hot, right? Have a look at this glass jar found in the Hiroshima aftermath. It seems that heat of approximately 1,500 degrees centigrade, 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, is required to produce this level of deformity. Scientific examination showed that a virtually instantaneous heat wave struck this object and passed as quickly as it had arrived. Basically, the jar resumed its solidified form without leaving stress marks. The flash heat incinerated many, many people on the spot too, which is absolutely horrible. And this jar just goes to show how hot it really, really was. Always my thoughts going out to the cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima many years later. Coming into number 9, we have the pilot. This portrait of a World War II pilot in its original 1940s frame was listed on eBay. The listing reads, This haunted picture holds the energy of an old pilot's ghost. When the haunted picture is set out on display, many people have witnessed a man dressed in uniform appear in hallways and doorways of the house. A deep man's voice can be heard at late hours of the night. I can usually hear military jargon being shouted at fast speed. I don't know why this energy is so attached to this haunted picture or what this ghost is trying to tell me. Weird. The listing also claimed that only those with the quote unquote gift would be able to feel the presence. Rightio then. Coming into number 8, we have the World War II wheelchair. This wheelchair is haunted by the ghosts of hundreds of wounded soldiers. Why? Well, the chair was the property of a military hospital during World War II, and it is thought that it contains the spirits of those who sat in it. Sure. Chair owner Neil Packer said that when he sat in the chair, he felt as if his leg had been amputated. Weird. He said that another man's leg went blue after a brief stint in the chair. Another sitter said that she felt like her chest was heavy as if she'd had an infection. The chair was actually taken onto British television too. It featured on This Morning with hosts Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, and Phil decided to sit in it. Honestly, I feel like if I've learned anything across my four years of working on Most Amazing Top 10 is that you should never sit in the haunted chair. Does anyone remember the Busby Stoop chair now chained to the ceiling in Yorkshire? Like seriously, don't sit in the haunted chairs. But unfortunately, Phil couldn't have listened to me because I made this video after he sat in it and I don't think he watches the channel, but maybe he should. Nonetheless, he sat in the chair on live TV and this was his reaction. The chair? Yeah. Um, but uh, How do you feel? I feel like no, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> don't be annoying. Just joking, this is actually what he said after making that face. Perfectly normal. Really? Yeah, absolutely. No twinges in your leg? I have no I have no twinges, I have no uh, I have absolutely nothing going on here what whatsoever. <laughs> Coming into number seven, we have the pigeon foot. Ah, uh -huh. that's not a pigeon sound. Do pigeons make sounds? I don't know. You'll actually find a lot of severed pigeon feet in war museums across the world. Why? Because birds played a very big part in the war. Pigeons were used to send secret messages, but as you can imagine, that brought about a whole new layer of chaos that came from trying to intercept them and stop enemies finding them. One pigeon that failed in its delivery mission was discovered in 2012 in an English chimney in Surrey. David Martin was cleaning his block's chimney and found that one one dead bird had a red capsule on its leg. He opened it up and discovered a secret World War II era message written in code. Eventually the code was cracked and the message was discovered to say, hit Jerry's right or reserve battery here. Already know electrical engineers headquarters, troops, panzers, batteries, engineers here. 
Of course, Cherry, I have to say, was the nickname for the Germans, for those of you watching that didn't know. So, vital intel that was never delivered on account of dead pigeon in chimney. Coming into number 6, we have the Trench Raiding Club. War is savage, and that's pretty evident in the existence of this raiding club. Many old weapons were found after the war, and often these clubs were found. Now, they're usually made from wood wrapped in sharp pieces of metal, which to me sounds very medieval. Clubs and flails have been used since times of early warfare. While trench clubs were largely used in World War 1, some were still found after World War 2, and honestly, I can't believe in the 20th century we were still whacking each other with spikes on sticks. Although, thinking about that, I maybe would prefer meeting those than some of the other World War II weapons. Although, actually, maybe the sticks. No, the stick. Brutal. It's brutal. It's all brutal. It's all got very morbid too. I'm imagining being hit with a big stick. Ah. Coming into number five, we have the trumpets that started the war. These scary wartime objects were actually from an ancient period in history. In 1922, King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened. Now, this was a period between the First and Second War. A lot of people were very nervous about the whole thing, and perhaps for good reason, as this is where the legends of the Curse of the Pharaoh began. Among the artists, fact, silver, wooden and bronze trumpets were found. Now, the trumpets were played and recorded in 1939 on British radio, the BBC. A few months after it was broadcasted, World War II broke out and the announcement was delivered to the British public on the same radio station. This has led many to believe that the trumpets are cursed and actually have the power to summon war. This is one of the only instances where I would ever be like, do not play the trumpets. Usually I wholeheartedly encourage trumpet playing. I love trumpets, they're great, but war trumpets are bad. Yes, they are. Coming into number four, we have the lost bombs and the found bombs, but mostly the lost bombs are the concern. So a lot of worrying undetonated bombs have been found since World War II. Just last year, 1,000 people were evacuated from their homes in Cologne in Germany when a World War II bomb was discovered near a petrol station in the city, which doesn't sound like a great combination. That wasn't even the worst of it. In 2011, 45,000 people were forced to evacuate their homes when a drought revealed a big unexploded bomb in the Rhine near Koblenz. The scary fact is that thousands of unexploded bombs are still sitting hidden and buried across Europe. Do you want to hear a scary statistic? 70 years later, more than 2,000 tons of unexploded munitions are uncovered on German soil every year. Terrifying. Sadly, coming into number three, we have the body parts. It wasn't just the Nazis mutating their enemies, a lot of countries were at it. It seems that actually a vast amount of Americans who took part in World War II and were stationed in the Pacific would wear Japanese body parts as trophies, which is disgusting. Luckily, the majority of these have been destroyed, but necklaces made of Japanese teeth were fashioned. Ears were pinned to military belts, and it's even said that Franklin Roosevelt, the President of the United States, was given the gift of a letter opener made out of a Japanese soldier's arm. A bunch of trophy skulls were found after the war. Skulls of dead Japanese people were given to Americans as gifts. Here's a picture of a woman that appeared in a magazine in 1944 that shows her writing to her sweetheart to thank him for the skull. Honestly, I can think of more romantic gifts, but like, whatever. Actually, not whatever. Judging you, skulls, gross. Stick to flowers, please. Coming into number two, I do love a ghost ship. We have the Queen Mary. So, the Queen Mary is more than just a haunted object, it's a haunted object filled with hundreds of other haunted objects and floating. When World War II began, British ship the Queen Mary was converted into a transportation ship for Allied troops. She transported 800,000 troops to Europe in her time. Unfortunately, though, she was involved in an accident which killed 239 people. The Queen Mary was retired in 1967 after another stint as an ocean liner. She is now a permanently docked hotel in Long Beach, California, but it is said that she is mercilessly haunted by a number of souls. It seems the swimming pool is haunted by the spirit of a young girl. A first class passenger, dubbed the Woman in White, glides across the floor of the Queen's salon in a long dancing gown. The ship has had to retire the use of room B340 because there have been so many complaints of its haunting. Those who have been on the ship tend to report ghostly goings on, and they have done for decades. Ever since the ship was a working transport ship, people have been spotting ghosts. Scary, but I do love a ghost boat. 
I don't love this at number one though, this is absolutely horrifying, I only learnt about this today. I am talking about the blood flag. The blood flag or the Blutfahne was a Nazi swastika flag that was regularly carried during the Third Reich and it served as a ceremony piece for the party. The flag was the original carried in Hitler's failed Munich Beer Hall Putsch in November 1923, it was soaked in the blood of an SA member who was killed in the attack. The flag was then saved and had the names of 16 people who died in the putsch sewn in. The flag was kept at Nazi HQ in Munich but was taken out for ceremonies in which other flags were bought to touch it in order to like consecrate them. It is said that the blood flag touched all of the banners in the Nuremberg rallies. The blood flag interestingly hasn't been seen since the end of the war, nobody knows where it went. Creepy. So guys that was that, that was the top 10 scary world war 2 objects for you. Before I read comments I want to introduce you to one more object that I couldn't find a way to fit into my list. Meet this chap, it's Rupert. He's a lost Rupert. He's Rupert to me anyway, British troops called him Rupert and the Americans called him Oscar. This is an allied used dummy, they would use paratrooper dummies to cause confusion and chaos amongst German troops so they would drop these Ruperts or Oscars onto land and then Germans would be like ah go get them but no. Just a dummy. Okay, so let me know what you thought of that video and before I go I'm going to read some comments from the top 10 scary ways the Russians could be spying on us. Of course I know that everyone's spying on everyone, so it's just like a whole thing. Blue Mercedes said, Rebecca you're my favourite when you're telling a story. Good! I tell a lot of them, so enjoy. Mr. Death said, I can't wait when Most Amazing Top 10 gets 10 million subscribers. I know, I mean it'll probably be a little while away but it'll be a big party for sure. There'll be glitter, there'll be cake, stick around for that. But stick around for the other videos that we've got in this playlist because I am sure that you will get some entertainment today. How many Most Amazing Top 10 videos have you watched in a row? What's the record? I feel like I need to know. Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. Once again if you want to read up on more of these objects we have got all of our source links in the description description box and also links to our most amazing Instagrams. Leave a thumbs up on this video, share it with a friend, I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and I will see you soon. Bye!